beginning podcast. Uh, here we are today with uh, Mr. Richard Barry. Uh, he's just informed me that he's won the overall cycling Iron League um, on Swift. Uh, big congratulations and taking the time to join us here today. Thank you. Um, glad, us, glad to be here. Talk us through today's race then. Where, where was it? Um, it was in, in Paris, Champs Elysees. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. So, um, Pan flat sprints. It was a point race, so sprint okay. every lap and then two sprints on the last lap because of the finish line. So yeah. Um it was going to be tough to win today with with the with Hassan because he's a big sprint. So just followed him around all day, got second in every sprint, second overall. All right. Brennan, Brennan. Job done. So need a few need a few kind of hillier races to to split things up a bit, but it was nice yeah. to get the job done anyway. So that was first overall then from that's their second and second league, isn't it then? It's their third one. Their first one was a year ago, believe it or not, because yeah, yeah. we're in here that long. And then, so like their first one was last March. And how'd you go on that um, one? I think I don't know. It's, I, that's when I started drifting actually. I'd never raced a Zwift race before okay. the first Cycling Ireland one last March. So I don't know, I, I can't remember, I think it was sixth or sixth, fifth overall or something like that. Um like everybody, I started at the back and like the first time you ride a Swift race, you think it's everybody's cheating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, <laughs> yeah. then you realize you learn the video game and you get better. And then I ended up getting a, a bit fitter as the series went out. So you end up getting suddenly you get further up the order. Yeah. Um, and you're still sort of question. It's not questioning, but as the league went on, certain names were dropping out. And yeah. the first time I think I got I got third in a race and Gary Nugent, isn't it Gary Nugent? I think. Yeah. Straight on, I had an email the next day to submit like power files and weight and height video. So, yeah, when you see things like that, it's like okay, it's, it validates your racing. I think that's what it's Lindsay, good, it's, and it's good. Like that's what Lindsay was saying in the podcast. You know, all these guys were beating him, and he, he was looking at them going, "Right, okay, okay." And then they weren't there the following week, obviously because they didn't yeah. submit the uh, the info. So exactly, yeah, I haven't got asked yet. Like it, it, <laughs> you'll get there. It's fair enough, like when you see the likes of Chris McLinchy hammering it, because you're like, yeah, he's he'll beat me every day of the week anyway. Yeah, you know, he's he's a, he's another level altogether. But it's when you see guys going, oh, I don't know how, like, yeah, yeah, you've never seen them before. They're not around, and and some guys are legit as well. They they do prove that they're oh, legit, yeah. and it's great. It, you know, some, um, people, some people can hurt themselves more on the turbo than they can in, in the real world, and, and vice versa. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's almost easier to go harder on the turbo because you don't have to worry about balancing the bike. We well, see, I'm the opposite. I don't think I go hard enough. I don't think I can get enough out of me. I'm, I'm talking to Chris. He's the weight, weights and all down. Yeah, so. it's like I don't have weights down, but my turbo was in a different place to where it started this morning. So I probably oh. should. <laughs> get a couple <laughs> like of the gone skew ways. Yeah, yeah. Get a couple of um, raw bolts put into the ground. And the, well, yeah. Well, Talk us through your setup anyway while, while we're on, on the. Um, it's but it, laptop connected to. I recently got a PC, but the Wi-Fi isn't too isn't great in it, so I'm still in the laptop. But I've connected to a monitor and then just a smart trainer, kicker core. Okay. Um, um and I have a fan on. as well. Good bike. I, on. Yes, I have the good bike on because my winter bike isn't. I broke a cable in the winter bike, and then I just was lazy and didn't didn't change. It's so sick, no? so the the good bike's on it. Um. I'm in the garage as well, and I have a big roller door open garage, so it's ideal. This it's ideal, like in the winter time, it could be five degrees in the garage. Yeah, yeah. So temperature is perfect. Like it's you kind of want to be really cold starting off. Right. So you did the cycling Iron league last year, and then oh, the, sorry, the, the first one, and then the second mm-hmm. one was sort of towards the end of lockdown, isn't that right? It was. Yeah, it was. I was actually using that league to replace cyclocross almost. Yeah, because yeah. I was I was going f- I was up at your race in September and that yeah. was the first race and last race in the season. That was it basically, as, yeah. As it turned out to be, um, and I was kind of going all in with for for cyclocross, um, and there was still the promise of nationals on the card. Yeah, you know, elite status. There was still the promise of January. So, effectively, for the second cycling Ireland league, I was doing a pre weight race. What I was probably taking them more seriously than you should but it was just to yeah, yeah, replace yeah. what it would have been taking seriously yeah, yeah. you know just just to keep a focus in training um and that's i think i was i was second to mateo on that one so i was i was happy with that because mateo again like you know the 
there was probably a few more riders in it compared yeah. to this one. But it was just it was nice to be up there again. Like I was, um I, I got was, one win, but yeah, I was sort of watching I, I hadn't done one of the Cycling Ireland ones and I sort of seen your name coming through. And I was going, Rich, Richard's mm-hmm. going, Richard's going well, he, he's coming through the results. <laughs> and I was like, if he's going well on Swift, he's gonna be going well at the cross because they are the sort of same background. They, really. I, I think it's it's probably closer to the cyclocross effort than it is to to the road. Or because say, the yeah. duration is is pretty much the same. It's like forty <laughs> minutes to an hour, and it's your start is cyclocross is still harder, but your start is so hard and drift. You're going that hard, so hard yeah. for maybe those three or four minutes. Yeah, yeah. Then you have to try and recover, and then depending on the lap, then like if it's a flat race, it's fine. But if there's there's short sharp efforts in it, then it's it is very similar to a cross race. Yeah, and then you did a few um, of the, the Tuz races, and uh, you were you were uh, they're brilliant crack. I love them. Yeah, you were in the mix and uh, showing us showing us some clean hills in, in them. So you were as well. Uh, I think that's a great idea by Ross and the gang. Is it yeah. Ross and Rick? I don't know. I don't. I only know them from from the Tuz leagues and from from Facebook and stuff. Yeah, but it's. I think the work they've done with that is brilliant. Yeah. Um, like. Send out the end and even life. Mark, Mark and and Tommy and Fiona on the live stream. It just it adds a bit of an event. You go on the Wednesday night and you flick on YouTube on on your oh, phone yeah, yeah. and. You hear the crack going on, and it's just it's it's brilliant crack, and you know with the slagging with Ross. Then I think I was oh, yeah, yeah. the second or third in the race, and I had attacked on Box Hill, and Ross just comments, um, "You attacked, but you 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 you, you rode to check your legs couldn't catch or something." Oh yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. That's, what, <laughs> that's you know, a so nor- was, normal banter for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's it's brilliant because it just brings. It kind of makes a community out of something that like oh, yeah. we're hundreds of miles away, like, and it's yeah, just. Yeah. You're all in the same race. It's. I think I remember, um, and, remember that race, and I think Tommy was commenting, and like Tommy's really clued in with the numbers. Oh, um, he loves the numbers, and he's he must have realized what you could hold for Box Hill was a wee bit longer than one of the other climbs that were previously done. Was yeah, that, uh, it was Libby Hill the previous week. Yeah. And I'd, I'd won the previous week, and I'd done That's like because right. I was listening to the commentary the previous week, and I was hearing Tommy. He was going, he was like, the best one minute power in the bunch was me that day. Yeah, yeah. He was like, oh, it's him for the win. I was like, will you shut up? Because everybody will watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's looking at you then. Yeah. Um, so I think that you went in Box Hill and then Tommy says, he's going a wee bit hard here at the bottom. Maybe I'll settle yeah. down. And then, yeah. <laughs> then. Oh, I, I went, I went a bit too hard. All right. But sure. It kind of draw, it draws people out then. It's still like, it's just the fun of it's brilliant. You know, That's there's true. no, like if you go to a road race or if you go even traveling to a cyclocross race, you don't necessarily do those things because your race could be over. Yeah, yeah. If you if you do that in a road race, you could be out the back and oh yeah, your race is over. That's it. You know, whereas you're on Zwift, you're at home. It's just it's it's definitely you, can, you know. So would you would you class your training? Have you changed your training the last maybe? Well, obviously everyone has, but had you had you changed your training the last year or two anyway? Well, I had it's for cyclocross. I had because um, I, I was getting like on the road. I was I wasn't brilliant on the road. I was I was okay. Like you know, sort of if I was at the front of the race at the end of the race, I'd have been happy. You know, if you were in the top ten, and when I mean top ten, it's like if I was eighth or ninth, that was a good day out. Yeah. So you know, um, and then so for I'd say five years ago, I started cross, and it turns out that like I was able to get better results in cross than on the road. So. Yeah, I'd slowly change my focus over to cyclocross. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is great. And the Munster League got stronger, and then we were kind of like we always down in Munster. Kind of the league took off massively. That's right. And the first couple of let's say the first couple of um the first couple of leagues, it was nice to be kind of up in the racing in Munster. But we we were still a little bit behind. But then we all kind of took cyclocross a bit more seriously, and we we closed the gap. The other problems yeah. like Leinster, yeah, everybody yeah. We kind of lifted it almost together because we all realised actually this is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I as it last June twenty September twenty nineteen, I got onto Andy Lay. Yeah. Um, because myself, um, I have a two year old at home, so we had an, a young baby at home, and I was like, oh, I'm trying to manage my own training as well as. Yeah, yeah, life. Sleepless nights are, you kind yeah. of have to. Um, so I've been working with Andy there the last year and a half, and that has changed my training a bit. And that's yeah. kind of, we're, and I'm still using that training for Zwift races. 
Yeah, yeah. Do you know I haven't I haven't specified for Swift race. It's just been specifying for crossing different zones and stuff. Yeah, it's, it, it's exactly. Not, as you we said, it is very close. You know, and they do they do both do complement each other. They do. They, the effort is quite close, and it's just it worked out well, and it's it's fun. Like as when I started Swift racing, I hadn't a clue, and let's say when I was let's say last win let's say last winter when Andy was coaching giving me the sessions we were both kind of learning Zwift together sort of oh what would this be or what would that be and trying new things so it's been good that way as well it's been it's provided an event to give training a focus to if that makes sense and are you concentrating more on on heart rate or or the watts then uh, I know it's still it's still all power based yeah, yeah. It, it's it's all what like in, sight, in a cyclocross race your heart rate's always going to be through the roof anyway yeah just goes I mean, up you're, you're not looking line, at power yeah. yeah it just goes up in flat lines so in training it's all watts then because yeah. that's what you can control so it's yeah. all more and power based and Andy's a bit of history about him so he knows what he's talking about anyway so uh, it's, it was like I was going I was going well enough without coaching but it's just it's yeah. be allowed to step you up to another level like it's amazing yeah. like when you get someone experienced like that and I had a fellow a few years ago and I was sort of doing I wasn't getting coached and he just said to me that if you put that up 10 beats, it'll make a big difference. And just him yeah. saying that. And then he, he was able to take the, the heart rate and change it into the power and the mm-hmm. difference that that made in, in like the space of a it, few weeks. It pushes you harder because when you're coaching yourself, you set an effort right and do 300 watts for 10 minutes. And yeah, you yeah. say, oh, that's my number now. And you'd stay in it for months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, that's the number you think you can that's do. It. But when someone's coaching you and they say, no, no, you do 320 now for 10 minutes. Yeah. That's it. And That's it. you'll do it because you're told to do it. And then, so after after that league, then you done. Oh, you did the Tour of the North then a few weeks ago as well. Oh, uh, that, that was brilliant. That was something completely, that was, completely different. Ah, uh, I mean, I think the whole concept of bringing that online was brilliant because the, everybody won. The sponsors won. The riders won. Yeah. Um, and it was just the race was so hard as well. Yeah. Like it, it, it was, it was a stand. It wasn't just like you know, three, three days of your regular race circuits. Like you had, you had the flat race, you had the time trial, and then the hilly circuit was hard. And then to finish off and have uh, the swift was just okay. that was horrendous. But it was brilliant. Like have you, have you, you have, have you rode the rail to the north in the past? No, or? no, because that would always clash with the. Uh, so um, I've ridden Ross Moon a couple of times, but then let's say it would clash with the Gory, so it would clash the races closer to home. And they all have a clean um, stage, yeah. Ross Moon would, yeah. You'd have, yeah. let's say, over the, so the the couple of years I did it was you the Healy Pass and the Caja Pass, but then you have the Valencia Island stage as well, which is okay. yeah. mental. Like, and I've, like that's just survival in Ross Moon. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the the Monday so, stage was just the the Queen stage, and how do you do uh, that overall? I was, I think it was four, fourth overall, but I won the sprints, okay. which is a little bit. I'd say I'm the worst sprinter ever to win a sprint jersey. <laughs> but um, I read the road book and I was looking at. I say, oh, I might go for the mountains jersey, and then I saw Chris was there, and I was like, his ninety second power is better than mine, so he's yeah. going to clean up on the points yeah. the following day. Um, and then no one sprinted for the first sprint in the the first stage except me. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, we're in London, so we got a hit yeah. start there. Yeah, and then I I think Chris beat me on the line for the second sprint, and I was third on the stage. So that kind of put me in a good position. Yeah. But it made Sunday's stage really hard because going over the Watopia Hill was very hard. Yeah. And then I, I just, was sprinting less. I was just about making that every lap. Like, yeah. Like, that was, that was really hard. And then you come down the other side, and then I had to sprint. Oh, geez. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So you had to sprint for the sprint point and that made it, I was nowhere in the finish, but because I was up there in the sprints, yeah, it meant I, I got, I, I, I ended up winning the competition just, but I was nowhere in the sprints. Like when everybody was sprinting for the finish, I think it finished like 20th. I was last man in the group or something. And what did you end up winning? Oh, I got the Galibier, the jersey, the cap and the, the gloves. Oh, all kitted out then, yeah. Oh, uh, it's it looks, it looks, it looks good. I haven't, I haven't been able to wear it yet, waiting for a sunny day or a, a warm day. Ish. what's it, what's it was, like what's it like there now? it's sunny but it's 10, 10 degrees still mm-hmm. still too cold for yeah still too cold for shorts and a jersey but and what, what they played to Ross for you oh yeah yeah for the, the prizes and they were like they were serious and well, not serious enough they were nice enough where people would go for them but 
because most of the prizes were raffle, no one was going to cheat for them yeah. either. Yeah. No, it's all, you know, it's all, so it's like... What way did you hmm. approach the, the time trial then? Um, I went easy, well, not easy, but like kind of sweet spot up to the hill and then yeah. tried to hit the hill as hard as I could. But I went too hard at the bottom of the hill, I reckon. So I was doing 400 watts. And then by the end of it, I was back at 360. So I reckon if on the I was fourth in the TT, and I I I still reckon I wouldn't have had much more in it. But yeah, yeah. it was kind of you had to hold back at the start because that climb at the end, like that yeah. hill was as long as even though it was two k, it took the same amount of time as the first. Talking to Chris last week, I think he says he just tried to go at four hundred and then hit the hill and go to four fifty. <laughs> and even those numbers for me, I'm like. Yeah, I think I tried to ride the climb. I think I tried to ride the flat at 380, which was just, maybe, mm. looking back, it was probably just a wee bit too easy. Yeah. And then, but then I, I was able to give it like 450 on, on the climb. Um, and it got yeah, because I think... PRs, so... Yeah, I think I was th- I tried 320 on the flat, and then I hit 400 on the climb straight away, and for the first couple of minutes, I felt brilliant. Yeah. But... There's part of it, in other words, of... like, yeah... Yeah, and I'd never ridden it before, and I was there even at the start. I was like, "Oh, I'm feeling good," and then it's amazing how quickly feeling good goes to hanging on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It just seemed to go on, and uh, the last k, yeah. last k or two, it was just it was so slow. I was still, I still rode it as as well as I reckon I could have. So yeah, I was still fourth in the state. Like I was still fourth. So and that, that set me then for the. I was so for the for the overall. I was sort of thinking that the few seconds here or there wasn't going to make much difference on on the Sunday. No, stage, not, with, no. <laughs> not with that stage on the Sunday. Because that was the Monday stage, yeah. The Monday, oh, that was. Yeah. I had the highest power for ninety minutes I've ever had. Was I had like yeah. three hundred, like, I had three hundred watts average for ninety minutes, and when you consider you had like a twenty minutes, I was twenty minutes at three thirty, yeah, and thirty five minutes at three forty, three fifty. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's like, but that was a great idea because it was. It, it really was. Uh, what about the tour of tour of Ulster? Then are you going to ride that? It's sprint. It's I'll, more sprint based, doesn't it? it? I'll see what the weather's doing. It's it's hard to like today. You now it's it's hard to reconcile staying inside on a Saturday morning when it's sunny yeah. or a Sunday morning when it's Sunday. I mean, I'd like I'd like to do it, and but it's. It really depends on the weather. There's yeah, there's only so much you can give to, especially three to riding to riding yeah. insides. Do you know? Oh, oh. Um, it's it is a good idea. Again, it's a brilliant idea, but I think it almost comes a little bit too late in the year when yeah. racing is just about to start again that, and the, the weather's thing. getting better. That's the thing. Um, so it's we'll see if the weather's bad. I'll be in it. If it's not, yeah, it's a, it's an op- it's an option anyway. Exactly, and it's great to have it. Um, so you're from Cork itself? I'm from Cork, yeah, about 20 minutes outside of the city, living so like, in Wexford for the last you, eight years. But And like you've travelled up to Orange for like, so that, you have your own scene down there, but like the travel, what makes you decide to go to a race that, you know, that, what's the deciding factor this, really? Re, this year there was a couple of factors. I'd seen any time, Orangefield kind of usually kicks off the cross season usually yeah. one of the earliest races yeah, yeah, and I'd seen maybe whenever three or four years ago people going up to it in the fr- when it was the Friday night actually John That's Dempsey from Clonmel he'd gone up and when it was a Friday night he'd gone up and he said it was brilliant um, and it is hard to justify like your three and a half hour drive up for what is an hour race yeah, yeah. but this year and I was tempted to go up last year and it was just like I oh, no, no it's too far and like we had a one-year-old who's waking up in an hour in the middle of the night. You're not going to drive up for three and a half hours. And this year it was a combination of there was a race I wanted to do because it looked good from previous years and also COVID. I was yeah. I was kind of under the impression that like working in a school, I could get a phone call on a Friday night saying you're a close contact and your racing's gone for the next two weeks. Yeah, yeah. So for this for for this year, it's like I'm going to race every race I can, and as it turned out, into it was the only race I could race. Sure, yeah, but it was it's a combination of like it was it was you know you're going up to a well organized race, and yeah. if something's well organized, it's worth the travel. That's right. Yeah, it's just sort of self um, sells itself. No, yeah. But if you, yeah, but if you commit to it as well, you kind of have to 
you, you don't even think about a three hour drive for a one hour race. It's like you're going racing. That's part of it. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'd be gone if I was racing a race in Cork or in any other race, I'd be there for the day pretty much anyway. The day yeah, is yeah. gone as far as I'm concerned. So yeah. if I was to get up a couple of hours earlier to, to go do, up and do you know of anything happening then with a, this UCI race? You involved you guys involved with that? I'm not involved. I know I know the venue where it's at. So it'll be at the race course in Clonmel. Um and I know barring restrictions it will happen. Okay. Um it's John Dempsey organizing it. So yeah. um like it it'll be great to have that excitement again. I remember being up at your race there a couple of years ago, the, yeah, the Molusk yeah. race. Yeah. And just like it's it's kind of like having a second nationals almost. It was, that yeah, makes it was sense. that sort of it was that sort of standard of of an event. Yeah. Mm. It, was, it was that big of a headache, yeah. yeah. I'd say it was. I wouldn't I wouldn't name the organizers, but again, the whole buzz around it was just kind of yeah, it's bringing cross to another level. Yeah, that's it. It's that's a you box, know, it's a box uh, tech, and we all tried it, so yeah. Exactly. And if 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 we get more organizers trying things like that, and I think like okay, I'm biased. I'm saying the Monster League, I think, actually really brought cross up another level in the south of the country because for a couple of years before that we were traveling to let's say the fixed races in Leinster. Yeah. Um, that's kind of where we probably all started off. Yeah. There was yeah. kind of there was probably I'd say there was a good eleven or twelve of us traveling to those Leinster races from from all the same area. And then um Paul Burchill you probably you know Paul Burchill. Yeah, no Paul, yeah, yeah. Um he um he probably had he See the first to organize a race in Munster. He he it was outside of a league. We had no league going down in Mallow, oh, and yeah. he organized another one in the new year. That must have been, I'd say it was 2016, 2015, and then 16, we started the league. The first Munster League was there. So yeah. you, our club, St. Finbars, um, John Dempsey's club. So you probably a series of eight races that year. Yeah, yeah. And now I think was it a couple of years ago? I raced like 15 or 16 cycle cross races. One year, yeah. Jeez. Like that's if in terms of in terms of slightly across in Ireland, that's massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like you know, we we would have we're blessed where we are because we have the north, we have the Ulster mm-hmm. League, which is good, and then we have we can go to the fixed ones. And you know, for the last couple of years, I've always rode the Ulster ones, and yeah, done one or two fixed ones, and I was like, right. And then was there was one year where I was like, right, I want to want to try and do the full fixed series and go for the overall, and it was like, right, okay. And yeah, just, just the standard was is completely different. Not not that it's better or tired, it's just a de- whole different it, uh, level. It's kind of a, they're they're different they're different racing groups. So it's yeah, like yeah. It's a, um, and I think by having more like that, so like Connacht, I think Connacht used to have a really strong cyclocross league for a couple of years. And if but if the more if you get if you'd four prov- provincial leagues, you could potentially arise and have a situation where alternate years each province could host a UCI race yeah 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 you know it's kind of like it's kind of the more people racing the standard's going to get higher amongst us anyway definitely and then there was the talk of the All-Ireland League and it's been bounced back and forward and yeah and frozen if you're doing something like that it has to be done properly yeah and the, you know, I don't think if you run the race like, they, these are the regulations yeah definitely mm-hmm. like the, the argument was you could just pick a league race in each province and that would be it yeah but I don't think that goes far enough. I think it should be a standalone race yeah. that on that weekend, there's no other races on. Yeah. And it's, because it, if it's just a part of a regular league race, it's it's just a regular weekly yeah. race and there's, there's no kind of, um, and I know it, it comes down to sponsorship and money and things like that. So it's not that easy, but I prefer yeah. to see something like that where it was, there was a big buzz around yeah. this race and you have one in September, one in November, one in December, where, wherever it is. Yeah. And it's like all the best riders in the country are there. Yeah, and then you you, you must have lifted your game then for the for the Irish champs then last year, like two year, two years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, twenty twenty, still last year, twenty twenty, yeah, yeah. nearly two years ago. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 um, I, I, my son, I reckon in ten years' time is going to be sick of me saying, "Remember the time I was fifth in the champs?" Because I, I'm going to live off that result for a long time, and I've no shame about. It. No, definitely not, because I think but, um, everyone, everyone got lapped up to 6th then or 7th. 10th, I think. No? I think yeah, yeah. Where it got lapped up to 10th. I mean, I actually hadn't, been, not that I hadn't been going brilliantly, I hadn't been going as well as I'd liked to have been, let's say, in, in January. There was just, 
and um, kind of the, the training and the season caught up with me because I was I was training on less sleep. Yeah, with, yeah. You know, young, you even know yourself. You have two kids at home, like yeah, yeah. waking up in the middle of the night, and but um, we'd still been focused. I knew there was going to be a bit of running, so I'd been been running for probably six weeks before anyway. Yeah, and just by genetics, I'm light, so I'm a like in the cyclocross world, I'm a better runner than most. Yeah. Um, so when you look. When I saw the course that week, I was like, oh, there's going to be a little bit of running in it. That'll be, you know, I'll have a chance of a top 10 here, like, you know, squeeze yeah, yeah. into a top 10. And then I arrived up to Sligo the Friday night and we went out to the course and it was lashing rain when we did the pre-ride. And you could still ride probably 60%, 65% of it. And I said, oh, nice bit of running here now. This yeah, yeah. definitely might squeeze a top 10, but everybody is still a good runner because everybody's fit. Yeah. Everybody, you don't go into the champs on bad form, really. You go into it going, everyone's going well. Yeah. And the Sunday morning, the sun was up and everything dried out a little bit. So it meant instead of being able to ride sections, it, everything returned to clay. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, half of this is running. Um, and I had a bad start and it didn't really matter because two or three laps in, I was up to fifth or sixth yeah, yeah, and all the monster crowd around the same hill and every time going up the hill it was like just going through a tunnel of noise because it was yeah, like yeah. you know all the crew from the monster races were there and it was just I was brilliant Brand I yeah. celebrated like I'd won the race so like a bit well, of an Egypt but no <laughs> I think like I fell in love with cross maybe geez, what was it 2015 when the champs were in uh Lady Dixon and I left at my yeah. game for that because I knew it was the, the Irish champs at home Yeah, and realistically I had a chance of a third because Rob yeah. and Roger were they were gone Actually, they were, but, yeah, yeah. Like, right, you accept that game for third and because it was a Belfast race and every, every, everyone was supporting me and it was me and Zeppi that were yeah. actually racing that day then for, oh for, for yeah day. so yeah so you do you left your and game you do, because it was like actually the year before the champs were in Cork, and That's right. um, I'd actually I'd really lifted my game for that, and I just got awful luck. Well, sorry, I had a bad start, but then I I got I was coming back into kind of twelfth, eleventh, or twelfth, and for me, when I say good result, if I'd been tenth in that race, it would have been brilliant. Yeah. Um, and I my pedal got stuck in a pigtail post. You know the little circles on the top of the pigtail post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My pe- I hit I hit the post. My pedal rose up, and it. I was literally a minute trying to prise the post apart to get the pedal out. Yes, sir, sir. Back down the order. A family there, new baby there, everybody there watching, big car crowd, and I was there like, all right. Okay, <laughs> no pressure. There is a fine line between exactly. support and then pressure. Do you know what I mean? But it wasn't even pressure. It was like, I was actually, I rode the race really well after a bad start. I was actually riding yeah. really well. And I was just, when it happened, I was like, oh, well, not much I can do about that. I dropped the team. You know, it's kind of, I dropped the chain on the boards just after the on the first uh, lap. Yeah, yeah. I, sort of, I sort of thought fourth or fifth was sort of on the cards. Yeah, and had a run from the the boards into the pits, but um, yeah, that was and that it, was a good. That was a fast race. That was a crit on grass. It was an interesting yeah. course now. Yeah, the big and bridge was brilliant. I think that the the corners in the top field now were a bit of overkill, but um, it was a shamrock. Shamrock, shamrock <laughs> from the from the air, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it but, was. Uh, it was like I, but um, uh, for me, I loved it. I I still enjoyed it because you'd like the whole the whole. Yeah. It was ten minutes from where I lived. Like, yeah, no, it was. So, it was some some it was cool. Like, so it was, yeah. So, what's the future then? For have you signed up for a new team? Then I seen sort of online. No, um, in well, I'm. It's the great thing about the it's great thing about the virtual world and real world is that. Obviously, I'm still in my club, St. Finbar's in Cork, but yeah. the, before Christmas, is it the team Next Esport, they're called. They, yeah. um, I, they emailed me before Christmas. I'd been up on a couple of Cycling Ireland races, and they were doing what's the, the Swift Racing League, but yeah. they were in Division 1, so they weren't in the Premier League. And they said, would I be interested in racing with them? And I said I would, but the, the time zones didn't match up. They were racing the American League, so okay. I would have been racing either at midnight or midday or something like yeah yeah it wasn't yeah. wasn't possible to race and i'd say a month ago one six weeks ago they contacted me again they'd been promoted to the premier league okay which is on a tuesday night and they said look do you want to join us for for the premier league so i said yeah brilliant um so that that's 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 nice that's that's interesting like it's um an esport team and there's on there you've got like 
it's a little bit of imposter syndrome because your teammates with Ashton Lambie, he's like, he's the second fastest pursuiter in the world. He had the pursuit world record before Ghana broke it. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, like world champ silver medalist. Um, who else? There's a fella, Dan, Dan Turek is on it. He rode for Israel's yeah, yeah. startup nation yeah, yeah. a couple of years, the last couple of years. So you're you're there, you're on the team list with like Ashton Lambie yeah, yeah. and Dan Turek and going, well, <laughs> should I be here? Well, you have to, you have to go with it. Ah, uh, you do, you do, and it's it's good. Like the because they're an American team as well, they're they're big on branding. So we've got a couple of sponsors on board. So we're getting right. sent out. Um, like it's the first time I've gotten anything for nothing. It's like getting sent out a ceramic bottom bracket and oversized jockey wings yeah, yeah, from yeah. from Kogel bearings and a um, couple of things like that, which is nice. Yeah. So no, that, that helps. So what what way? And it's uh, there's with. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Oh yeah, no, it's just it's it's. I think Zwift probably like that kind of stuff as well because that's their flagship race. You know, the Zwift oh, yeah, Premier yeah. League. It's the what, what way does that work? Night, so it's um, eight rounds. Although I'm not sure if last week's round will count because the game crashed for half of us. Okay, like we were with 10k to go. I think there's only 40 riders finished out of 110 on a pan flat race. Um, I checked like Matteo didn't finish, Chris didn't finish, so it wasn't like. They were dropped. It was just and those were on Tuesday nights, then, yeah, yeah. They had a few tech issues, but it's um, you know, there's prize money, there's promotion and relegation. So it's, apparently, the aim is not to get relegated this year. And you have to get invited, but, by um, them, obviously, then yeah, yeah. So you, you um, they so your the teams the team list is submitted twenty four hours before, and then you just log on whenever half an hour before, and you click into the race. So it's, right. it is an invite only, but it comes up and yeah, yeah, that's. That's quite cool as well. Like it's just, yeah, yeah. it's nice to be, it's nice to be racing at what, even though I'd be down the order at the height to see what the best racing in Zwift is well, like. That's it. It's you know you've got yourself to a level now. It's like right, you know, you deserve it because you've got wins and you've got results, and and you're doing the, the verification. Do you know what I mean? Where yeah. the guys that aren't like myself haven't done the verification. There's no point in me doing these races. Do you know what I mean? No, yeah, but you you get there as well. Like it's kind of it's it's nice to be able to ride those races, um, yeah. and I think you just you just get like it's pure luck that I got there really because if you told me, whenever last March that yeah. oh you'd be you'd be doing all this, I'd be saying you were mad. I, like I definitely wouldn't say it's luck, like because like I was watching the Cycling Ireland races in work, and like your your name's mm-hmm. constantly mentioned. You're you're in the mix. You're at the you're at the sharp end of the races, like yeah. I suppose it's it's lucky finding a discipline that that you're matched well to. I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Do you know the fact that let's say I love ra- I love racing on the road, but you can see from the results that I mightn't be matched the best to road. Do you know racing on yeah, the road? Yeah. Whereas cyclocross and Zwift, okay, whatever it is, I'm I match well to racing those races or match better to racing those races. I think I think. With the road racing, you need you need the hours, you need that the big base, and like, yeah, you, like watching on. Even if I go on to my Strava now, I, I've removed a lot of people from Strava now because I don't want to see <laughs> what boys are doing. But like the guys out, out today, hundred, what was it? Gary had like a hundred mile with a with an average of 20, 20 mile an hour. That's like yeah, yeah, like my we are here and there just isn't going to cut it with road racing. But it. It's super effective for the other, like, you know, you can hop on and do like an hour, 60 minutes on the turbo and it'd be a really yeah. effective session. Yeah. And then get, let's say, during cross season, because, well, a typical cross season, because of racing takes away your hours. Yeah, yeah. Like in cross season, nine, a nine, a nine hour week would be a big week. Yeah. Do you know, an eight or nine hour week and maybe... In, like I'm lucky in the fact being a teacher, I have hours. I do have hours if I want them in the summertime. Yeah, yeah. But at the most, I'd still do would be twelve or fourteen hours. It's still not. That's right. For the time available, it's not massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know, like I, I remember coming one of the weeks. There was a, there was a week, and like all I did was turbo. It must have been bad weather, and like the the bike got a hammering, and it was just on. <laughs> and yeah, if you, if you can just do one thing. You know that would be it. Other people would be no. I need to get out to a forest for cross and do X, yeah. Y, and Z. You know what I mean? But you know, if if you could just do one thing, Swift would would get you through it enough. Like you know. Oh, I would, because even let's say at the the middle of January, I just text Andy saying like we were still training up to January, and for the last couple of races in the Swift League, once the champs were cancelled, we went right. We 
really yeah. try and go for the last two rounds and see what happens. Um, and then I said, right, six weeks, I, I don't want anything for the next six, eight weeks. Yeah. Um, and I, every, every time I got in the turbo, the weather was rubbish. We couldn't get out of the house because of lockdown. So you're there saying there's no motivation to get on the turbo other than hopping on a race. Yeah, yeah. And then you hop on a race or you, like the odd time, if it was a short race, you might do two races and have 90 minutes done and yeah, you come yeah. off it and it's, it's just brilliant crack. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas three, four five years ago, say you have to do an hour in the turbo or an hour and a half in the turbo. It'd be like, it, it would yeah. seem like the worst thing ever. And the whole thing now might even be to, you know, Likes, likes of yourself they're getting the, the ceramic ball and bracket and, and the jockey wheels this might be the next mm-hmm. thing guys people buying products just for the turbo because right. Chris I think was it Chris for the world he was saying he had the ceramic speed he switched yeah. it to a CT bike which is dead right <laughs> yeah. but he had the ceramic speed oversized for the um, for for Zwift and I think I think it has it's well and truly taken off now with obviously the pandemic helped but yeah, I think yeah. companies as well are going to get in, get on this as well. Yeah, yeah. It's like the whole global yeah, market if, as well. Exactly. It's like if, if a company can say, right, you will get five extra watts on Zwift because you're using this bottom bracket and these these jockey wheels, oh, people will buy yeah. it. But then I wonder how much of that will apply then over to the road because, you know, like uh, there's certain guys that I know won't have carbon bars. But then if you add all these wee things up on Swift and you see, you actually see the numbers, yeah. Then if they go, well, if it ha- it's happening in Swift, which is a game, sure it's bound to happen in the real world, and it, it's bound to be changes in, in, in that. There, there will be crossover, but I just think, I suppose, because it's it's less, you're less in control of what happens on the road. I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you know? Because in if if you're in the wrong position, in the bunch in the road, and you can't position yourself in the bunch, then you're. Ne- it doesn't matter what watts per kilo. It doesn't matter what yeah, numbers yeah. you have. You're getting nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I think, but it will transfer over. It, I definitely think. I think it will. Yeah. But even in cyclocross, like I think cyclocross is even further ahead than the road in tech wise, because if you look at us, like we look at our, our tubs or tire pressures or tire treads, yeah. Like we do pre-race laps and we're like, oh ha- one PSI or two PSI here where Yeah, yeah. Do you know? Definitely. Um and I think that probably will transfer more over to the road. Yeah. What was it? The uh Turf Landers was one on clinchers for the first time. Yeah. That yeah. was mad, see. I think yeah. I think tub, tubs in the road could well be gone now. Yeah, tubeless, especially like, after that. I don't even have a set of tubs for the road anymore. So I saw I had a, I had a set of tubs for the road and I sold them. I'd say I sold them six months ago and I was delighted. Like I'll never go back to tubs from the road. I'd yeah. say. Yeah, I've actually just glued a set of cross wheels up because I have a funny feeling there's going some stuff is going to be scarce come this excitement. Yeah, even if there if there is a high demand. So like I've started. I cross already, you know. There will be, yeah, because I I got in all my cross stuff there for last season. I I generally look generally in kind of February time. I'm um, you get you see all the sales and cycle cross tubulars because yeah, yeah. the season's over. So I got a, a a good few tubs in probably February two years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> February la- like February twenty twenty, which I glued on ready for last cross season. So it's yeah, all ready to go again, but. They love time. They've aged. Yeah, yeah. I have a big bale of tires, and I actually put them on on my Instagram stories. It was like, guys, there's there's free tubs here. Please come and take yeah. them. Now they're, they're a little bit worn, but uh, yeah, it's just too good to throw out, you know. But no, uh, no takers. Um, what what's the cross bikes? Is the Scott you're on, isn't it? I've yeah, I got I've yeah, I've two Scots. I've I um, so the Scott, it's the same as David Conroy's bike, bike actually. We, and we got them at the same time as well, I think. Um, the Scott Addict. Um, so when did I get my first one? I got the first one in 2017, I'd say. Yeah. Um, that was when I really went all in. That was my first disc bike, carbon wheel, carbon yeah. tubs, the job. That was um, That was when I went all in. And was it last year? I can't tell you. It's last year, 18 months ago. I was going, oh, I might get a new road bike. And... I was saying it to Anya, my wife, and I was like, she was like, well, you can get a new road bike. You're doing more on the cross bike. So I got yeah. a new cross bike and said, yeah. it's just hard to put, it's hard to buy an identical bike that you already have. Oh, no, it's actually easy. It's easy because the wife does. <laughs> yeah. I had to keep all the bikes the That's same true. I, can hold, I, I, I moved to Stevens last year and I just sort of brought it home and she was going, 
what's Stevens? And I was like, well, it's just just a new bike. And she was like, oh, right. But if I had him in a track, when when the man no difference. Came, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like, I like, hadn't thought that the identical bike, but yeah, I got a new bike, and it's like, oh no, it's just just a new frame, you know. So, but surely you'd get away with it, Len. Like, oh, it's uh, sent out there from Trek for testing because I'm a dealer or whatever. You know, the dealers have been really nice recently because they've sold oh, so many bikes. I know how to give that for St- for Stevens, you know. So I was trying. To yeah, buy. that's true. But uh, yeah, well, I had that conversation. I was like, with Mark, he was trying to buy a bike, and uh, he's like, I don't know whether to buy the road bike or the cross. And it's like, well. This year alone, we might only get to do five road races. Mm-hmm. Uh, fingers crossed for a full cross season. So, yeah. Yeah. A, that was my logic when a couple of years ago, it was like I was probably only going to do a handful of road races anyway. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. it is what it is. Um, so that, that's everything, guys. Yeah. Um, just, um, I don't think there's much more to cover. You, so, you don't know whether no. you're going to ride the Tour of, uh, Tour of Ulster then? No, if, it, it'll depend on the weather. Yeah. I'd like, I like, I, I see it going on, and if I'm not writing it, I'd probably be disappointed that I didn't write it. But then, if it's if I'm in the garage and it's yeah 18, 19 degrees outside, and you're racing, I'd, I'd crack as well. And you're racing every Tuesday night then. The Tuesday, yeah, the well, not every Tuesday night. It's we've a we have a squad of ten, so it's five every. Five five get selected, so I'm not on this Tuesday, but I think I'll be on the next couple of Tuesdays. I think is it on YouTube? Depending on the course, it's on YouTube. Yeah, um, actually, Matt Stevens and is a Bob oh, Tuttle yeah. commentator yeah, on it. I've, I've seen a few of those. Um, yeah, so that's the one on YouTube. But um, it's on it's on every seven o'clock every Tuesday night. There was one I was watching last so, week, and it was a guy he had got away in, in Watopia, and he had he had up to like fifteen seconds. And he just and he got caught in the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, was, that. Got, yeah, yeah. that was I was in. That was the race. That was the race. We were all half of us were kicked out of just because the, the game, the game crashed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, oh, well, yeah, no, that was I saw. I saw the replay of that. I watched that so, back and felt for him. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But here's but go ahead. I know. Go on. Go on. I was just going to say thanks for taking the time anyway for for coming on board. Um, I know. Delighted. Fingers crossed that you get a uh, bit of road racing and fingers crossed we get a bit of cro- cross racing. Uh, cross is coming. Cross yeah. is definitely coming. That's, yeah. that's what I'm hoping for anyway. No. So thanks for taking the time anyway, pal. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Len. Yeah,